thank you for the opportunity to present my work here. Um, I've done in the last few years on astrocyte maturation and the underlying molecular mechanisms. Um, I'm a postdoc in Francois Guillemot's lab here at the Crick. Um, we're interested in astrocytes because astrocytes are one of the major cell types in the brain and they have quite a diversity of different functions. And as you can see here, they're kind of widely distributed throughout the brain parenchyma. And yeah, these, these different functions uh, are, for example, uh, support for, uh, for neurons with trophic and metabolic fact, uh, factors. Also, they regulate the blood-brain barrier and their cerebral blood flow. And they're also involved in modulating the signaling between the neurons by uh, controlling synaptogenesis and synaptic uh, yeah, neurotransmitter signaling. But it's not very clear so far how these different functions are established during normal brain development. And it's interesting because they are also often uh, defective uh, in diseases. Uh, so what we wanted to find out is what molecular changes are occurring during this maturation process, uh, which occurs in mouse between uh, yeah, early postnatal stages and the adult stage, and how these molecular changes are regulated. So initially, as there's not much known, uh, we wanted to investigate in more detail the transcriptional changes uh, during that process. And for this, we performed single cell RNA sequencing of astrocytes purified from early postnatal and adult mouse brain. And with this, we, uh, yeah, we were focusing on SOX9 positive cells, which, are, which is a marker for the astrobial astro lineage. We identified different populations. Uh, among those is one population which is uh, still proliferating, so probably the earliest glial progenitors. And there is one major population of adult astrocytes. So these are the mature astrocytes and a couple of uh, immature populations in between. And with this, we could reconstruct a hypothetic uh, maturation trajectory from these uh, progenitors uh, over three uh, post mitotic stages to the adult astrocytes in the, uh, yeah, in the adult brain. And we were interested in the transcriptional changes occurring during this uh, maturation process. And we found several clusters of immature genes, which are, have highest expression in any of the immature uh, astrocyte populations. And other clusters of genes, which we call mature astrocyte genes, which are, have highest expression in the adult astrocytes. And these gene expression changes reflect very well the, the switch from developmental support functions and the still proliferative and neural stem cell like behavior of immature astrocytes Whoops. Uh, to, the, to the mature state where they have these uh, metabolic support functions and they regulate uh, neur uh, neuronal transmission and the blood circulation. So the question was then uh, how are these uh, transcriptional changes that we find, how are they regulated? And one important mechanism that regulates uh, these uh, long-term uh, transcriptional changes during, during cellular differentiation processes is obviously the remodeling of uh, the epigenetic landscape, the activation or inactivation of stage-specific enhancers. And as a proxy for this activation of enhancers, uh, we analyzed chromatin accessibility uh, which we did again on purified astrocytes from early postnatal and adult brain. And we were using ATAC-seq, uh, which uses uh, transposase uh, to, to cut DNA, which is not bound to nucleosomes, so open chromatin. And with this, we get these uh, uh, accessibility profiles. And what you can see here is that the accessibility of the of these regulatory elements around uh, the genes correlates very well with uh, the changes in gene expression. So uh, close to the transcriptional start site of immature astrocyte genes, we find a closure of chromatin elements. So a bunch of closer, closure of uh, enhancers, whereas around mature astrocyte genes, there is an opening of enhancers between P4 up here and uh, two months of age down here. Uh, we were then interested what causes these changes in chromatin accessibility. For this, we were performing a transcription factor binding motif analysis. And this uh, revealed that homeobox transcription factors and uh, transcription factors of the retinoic acid related orphan receptor class, these motifs are most enriched. And in line with this, also, we find an upregulation of these transcription factors during maturation, suggesting that 
the upregulation of these transcription factors might then lead to a chromatin opening and the induction of these mature astrocytes genes. To study this in a bit more detail, we switched to an in vitro model where we differentiate astrocytes from cultured neural stem cells using BNP4 and growth factor withdrawal. And these astrocytes, they express astrocyte markers, but uh, from their transcription profile, they remain at least partially immature. And among these genes that are not, these mature astrocyte genes, which are not prominently induced, are several transcription factors. So from the new stem cells uh, and the BMP astrocytes in vitro don't express several of these transcription factors that are induced during maturation in vivo. So this indicates that this, the lack of these transcription factors might contribute to the lack of maturation in vitro. So we were wondering whether by inducing these transcription factors in vitro, we can promote astrocyte maturation. For this, we were focusing on four uh, candidates, which we expressed in a lentiviral transcription, uh, in a lentiviral overexpression system. And indeed, we could found, find that each of these transcription factors induces different subsets of the mature astrocyte genes in a largely non-overlapping way. So it seems that multiple of these mature astrocyte transcription factors in a modular way induce uh, the mature astrocyte genes. So the question is now, what regulates in normal conditions uh, this uh, upregulation of these transcription factors that are lacking in vitro? And obviously in vitro, a lot of signals are missing uh, that might promote the maturation in vivo. So we were using uh, different culture conditions to see whether, whether we find signals that promote maturation. And for this, we were using uh, either the addition of FGF or the culture in 3D conditions, which have been shown to promote some level of more of, of maturation or functional maturation of astrocytes in culture. And indeed what we find uh, in these conditions, especially if we combine both FGF and 3D conditions, that there's an upregulation of several of these mature astrocyte transcription factors. And in line with this, also the overall transcriptional profile of these cells is becoming much more mature. And so overall, this, uh, this suggests pretty strongly that uh, astrocyte maturation is mainly driven by extrinsic signals, which are then in inducing intrinsic uh, mediators, uh, transcription factors, which are then regulate, uh, are involved in the chromatin uh, remodeling and uh, through this and direct induction, uh, in the expression of these mature astrocyte genes, which are required to establish the mature astrocyte functions. Um, if you're interested in more details, we have published this as a preprint um, so far and hopefully soon in a peer reviewed journal. And with this, I'm at the end. I want to thank the whole GMO lab for the support also, the advanced sequencing facility at the Crick was uh, very much involved in this project, and also other collaborators and the funding. Um, and I'm happy to take questions. And thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Michael. That was lovely. Uh, so I think we already have one question here. I know it's still Patricia. So I have a question. So I know that these astrocyte models can be used to study epilepsy, and they really suffer from the fact that the astrocytes are too mature. Do you think it would be sufficient to like? extrinsically upregulate these factors just by changing the culture conditions or do you think that part of the issue is that the astrocyte populations are just completely homogeneous and that you maybe have to have something different cell types in the culture that would be giving those signals to be able to get good models um i mean i guess both might or both yeah or both both might be might be might be helpful i mean i mean certainly improving the culture conditions uh, will improve or, or can improve kind of the the, yeah, the, the, the way how the how mature the astrocytes are getting how well they're reflecting the uh, the in vivo conditions um, but definitely even in these 3d fgf conditions they're still not uh, kind of fully reflecting the mature in vivo phenotype and also of course for for epilepsy there are also other cell types involved so i, I think i mean yeah, that makes sense. So Yeva is also asking here if you think that in an injury context, the astrocytes would revert back to an immature profile. Yeah, this this is actually something uh, which I'm very interested in, and there are there are definitely hints um, that there 
regaining some kind of neural stem cell like potential during uh, during injury conditions and i also have looked with this set of immature and mature uh, astrocyte genes that we have identified uh, in data sets of uh, cns injury and it seems that yeah many mature astrocyte genes are downregulated and many immature astrocyte genes are upregulated so that there is at least kind of a partial reversal of this uh, of this mature phenotype. 